Let's look at another example of how one might work out the voltage in a circuit due to this changing magnetic field. In this case, we're going to leave the wire loop what it is. We're going to leave the magnetic field as it is. All we're going to do is rotate the wire loop. So let's imagine we had a wooden rod. And we have a wire loop stuck through it. And let's have this angle here as theta. And we'll get it rotating at some angular speed omega. I would have a magnetic field that's vertically upwards and quite uniform, B. And we'll give this thing a height, H, and a width, W. The question is, what is the voltage around the loop? You could measure it if, say, you had the two wires not quite join up, but go off here to a voltmeter or something like that, or an oscilloscope. Now, in this case, the magnetic field is not changing. The area of the loop is not changing. However, the flux of magnetic field through the loop will change because of the angle changing. When this wire rod is vertical, when the wire loop is vertical, there will be no flux to it. The magnetic field lines will just go past. If you remember the definition of a surface integral, the vector has to be coming into the surface, not just going skimming past it. So what is the flux? If you remember, the flux in a situation like this is going to be equal to the magnetic field dotted with the normal vector times the area. So the normal vector is going to point in that direction, and that angle there is going to be theta, just the same as this angle here. So this is going to be equal to the strength of the magnetic field times the area, which is just uh, height times width, times cos theta from the dot product of these two. So as it starts off flat, there'll be a large flux as indeed this is zero, as angle gets larger and larger, the flux will get smaller and smaller, the perpendicular component of the area, if you like, gets smaller and smaller, until when theta is 90 degrees, pi over two radians, the flux will be zero, and then it will start going negative, it'll be the other way around. Now, in a situation like this, when something is rotating at an angular speed omega, by de definition of angular speed, that means that theta equals omega t. That's the definition of angular velocity. So we have that the flux is equal to strength of the magnetic field, height times width times cos omega t. And we also know that the electromotive force, which is the line integral of the electric fields around the loop, so e dot dl around the loop, is by Faraday's law d phi by dt. What is d phi by dt? Well, we can just differentiate phi. So b is a constant, h is a constant, omega is a constant. The only thing that's not a constant is omega, the cos omega t. And if you differentiate cos, you get sine. So that equals what b, h, omega. And because you've got a constant omega inside, to be width, and then you've got omega. I'm sorry, they've drawn them a bit similar. That's w, and that's omega, times sine omega t, actually a minus. Which way round is it going? Well, we've got the magnetic field going upwards, and the flux is getting smaller and smaller. So d flux by d time is going to point downwards because you're getting a big flux turns into a smaller flux. So you're going to get a downward change. Therefore, minus d flux by dt is upwards from the right-hand rule. That means you're going to get the electromotive force against the current going this way around the loop. So that's given us an equation for the nice alternating electric current we get, voltage we get in the circuit.